Greetings, 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 and welcome to Real Talk Tuesdays with Lisa. This is so exciting because today I have a special guest, and I want to introduce all of you to Jennifer Horsepole. Hi, Jen. Hi, how are you? <laughs> I'm wonderful. So you allow are. me to introduce you first and foremost, everyone. Okay. Uh, well, I want you to welcome and meet the mistress of the ceremonies for the 3E event. But before we go any further, I want to share something about Jennifer and why do I love this woman, her spirit, her soul, and her energy and who she is. So Jennifer um, Horsbull, she is, or the name of her company is Engagement PR and Marketing. She is an award-winning international speaker herself, inspiring and influencing audiences uh, from all over the globe. She's been on so many stages and her expertise is to elevate not only brands, minds and showcase and just give light to other people to be the success. And it can be in the way she speaks, the way she writes, the way she promotes. Actually, I think Jennifer is a true branding person. She is a global brand strategist and PR person. And, you know, Jennifer and I, we met online so many years ago, and we're going to be talking about this, right? And Sounds like online dating. <laughs> yeah. With online networking, it's similar. It's similar, right? <laughs> Online dating for <laughs> well, we were we were doing a networking and let's give credit to Manny Lopez. That's yes. where we met. Yes. So welcome, Jennifer. And I am so happy for having you here Thank with me. You. I'm happy to be here. I love real talk with Lisa. I love Lisa TV. I love Lisa Bubari. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So for for those who don't know much about the 3E event, it is our Women's Empowerment event coming up September 30th, and it's happening at the Embassy Suites in Glendale, and we still have time for you to buy the tickets, but let's let's talk about what is a, what is brand strategy, branding, what is, what is the difference between PR, marketing, social media. T let's talk about that. Those are all excellent questions. Excellent questions, right? And it's, it is very confusing, right? So what is a brand? What is branding? What is marketing? What is PR? How do they all fit together? And like, yeah. we know way back in the day, there used to be lanes and every lane had a very distinct, uh, this is what we do and we, never the three shall meet, right? <clears throat> so there was, mm -hmm marketing, there was branding, there was PR, there was communications, there was uh, advertising, you know what I mean? There was sales and they're all intertwined now. And that's, that's because of the internet, right? And so um, your brand, your brand uh, is really what people say about you when you're not in the room. It's how people feel about you or your business or uh, your, the services that you offer or the products that you have. Uh, a brand is really an emotional feeling. And so when you are thinking about branding, right, the actual verb of it, it's the purposely, it's purposely creating the emotional bond you want people to have with you or with your company or with your products or your services. There are people like that will only ever buy one type of toilet paper because that is their toilet paper. That's branding that at its utmost, right? That's when you you demand like you will not use anything else. That's you know the like best. when That's we what say Phoenix, right? There is all kinds of tissues and things like that, but we say, do you have a Kleenex? So right. Kleenex has become a branding, even though there's all kinds of other tissues. Well, it's a, that's an interesting uh, that's an interesting point because actually Kleenex and Xerox both in the 1980s nearly lost their brand marks because their names had become generic to the action or to the the product itself. 
So by saying I want a Kleenex and you'll accept any tissue that might be in a box is not the same thing, right? There's facial tissue, which is what oh. we had to actually move to so that Kleenex was able to keep its brand. Same thing with Xerox. It was, can you Xerox this? Until... Mm -hmm. uh, they lost their patent in the 1980s. And when they lost their patent, Icon, all the other Rico, you know, all the other brands, HP came out and they created their own type of system that Branding. they competed with Xerox and Xerox had to go and fight for its brand because that's one of the dangers of turning your brand into a verb. A lot of people like to do that. And there's things to think about and it's really comes down to when you're going to lose your patent. But here's one thing that I like to say about marketing. Marketing versus PR, because people ask all the time, like, what is the difference? Right. Mm -hmm. And then versus social media, like you asked, right? So marketing speaks to buyers and potential buyers. So whenever you're doing your marketing, you're really thinking like, how can I get people interested in buying from me? Public relations is really the relationship you have with all the different publics or all the different audiences that have something to do with your company or your brand or when they think about you. So PR is really the 360 degree perspective of your brand. So it could be your community. It could be vendors. It could be your industry. It could be your employees. It could be um, collaborators like joint venture partners. Everybody looks at, and then it also could be buyers and potential buyers, right? So everybody is experiencing your brand from a different perspective. Vendors are looking at your brand from a different perspective than buyers are, right? And differently from employees. So when you're speaking to people, you have to always be thinking like, what do they need to hear? What is it that they need for me to be able to influence them properly for my call to action? What do I want them to do? And how do I need to communicate with them so that they understand what I want them to do? And they're inspired to actually do that. Like right now, we are inspiring people to come to the 3E event. So why do they want to come? Well, they want to come because they're looking to evoke. They're looking to embrace. They're looking to evolve. They're looking to feel good. They're looking to own the power, right? Awaken the power within is what we're doing this year. So everything is about inspiring that feeling, that energy, that what they're going to get when they come out of it. And that's really PR. And so a lot of people think that PR is media, right? Like, how do you get me in the media? And media exactly. is a tool. Yeah, it's a tool. Yeah, because to PR. me, PR is press release. <laughs> right. And that is a tool in PR that we use. But PR doesn't stand for press release unless you're writing slang in the email that you're writing. But PR stands for public relations or the relationship ah. that you have with your publics. And a press release is a tool that we might use to speak to the media or through the media to a very, a, a specific audience, right? A very specific audience. And we're doing one. Actually, we're going to put one out this week about uh, your book, The Powerful She. Yes. <laughs> well, we've been in the media. We've been in some of the newspapers. Papers and yesterday I got interviewed by uh, one of the biggest Armenian media, which is Aspares. And so uh, this is amazing. So, public relations. Okay. Yeah. And then social media, again, another tool, right? Like we live in this rich world where, <clears throat> like, to do, to get people into earned media spots back in the day, we had, you know, Five, five television channels, maybe three, four radio stations that you could really get somebody onto, and then newspapers and magazines. And now it's like online magazines galore, podcasts galore, right? Opportunities galore, uh, live TV shows like Lisa TV right now. You know, I mean, there's a variety and the good and the bad, right? So there's so many opportunities. And so it's really about finding your audience 
where are they? What are they already tuning into? What are they listening to? What are they watching? Where are they reading, right? Where are they shopping? Where do you want to get them it, when they're in the mood to listen to a message that, that is going to resonate? So you want to always be tailoring your message to whatever media outlet or whatever audience that is that they're used to listening to or reading on that station. So when big companies have their advertising and sales and PR and all that, each one, each department does something different. Mm -hmm. So what happens when it's a small company and it's a, either a store, either a storefront or a uh, like an attorney, with, it's a one person with three people working in the office. Um, how do they do a PR or even as you're helping with our event and everything, how do we get into the psyche of mm -hmm. what the buyer, because like auto companies, mm -hmm. uh, auto industry, it's the advertising. It's, a, it's not necessarily the car, but they show when you sit in the car, how it feels. Yeah. And if it is a car that is fast and furious, it's more geared to uh, speed and in their t late 20s to 40s, because especially if it is like a, a high speed car. And then if it is a luxury or if it's an SUV, it's for moms and family, right? Yeah, it depends on what, you know, who is the typical person that drives a certain type of car, right? There's a mm. personality that drives a Volvo versus a personality that drives a Bugatti, right? Or a personality that drives a BMW <laughs> or a personality that chooses a Lexus over a Mercedes. Like there's, there's personalities. And that's why, you know, people always say, oh, you know, don't judge people based on the car that they drive or the job that they have. But we're all looking for where do people fit, which box do they fit in? And that's because mm -hmm. our brain, you know, there's a reason why we say think out of the box, because our brain likes to compartmentalize. It's a safety zone. We know where to put somebody. So when somebody tells me that they're an engineer by trade, I, I, I do inquire further because I come from a family of engineers and I vastly realize that, you know, an electrical engineer and a civil engineer and a mechanical engineer are not the same. They don't process the right. same versus a computer engineer. Totally different. Right. So what kind of engineer? But just the term engineer tells me already they're likely more of a left brain thinker. They like logic. logic. They like reasoning. <laughs> Right. <laughs> Emotions are like, get in the way. We don't, we don't want to do it. You know, they don't, why would you tap, get all girly out of there. Right. And then right brain people were all about emotion. We're all about drama. We're all about excitement. And, and you know what I mean? So, so by figuring out when somebody is like a woo woo, right. When they're talking about spiritual, they're talking about crystals, the logical side is probably less so on them and they're going to be ruled more by emotion. So it comes, the same thing comes down to cars, especially when you get into uh, some higher end, like some of the really high end, like I went into my friend's BMW 745 and I mean, it was like a jet. It was the most technically advanced car I had ever seen in my entire lifetime. Not only that, it was like a special edition. I, it did everything other than take off on the runway. I mean, it was just astronomical. And he was, his left brain had a left brain. Like, I mean, he was such a logical thinker. And so when you're doing your marketing, you really want to understand the psychodynamics of people more than just like, people are always like, um, what are the demographics? Demographics don't tell you hardly anything about anybody, especially in today's world. It's the psychographics. What do they care about? What are they thinking of? What are their problems that you're solving? What, uh, what, what gets them excited? What gets them upset? The more you can understand things like that, then you can really start actually having real conversations about with your content to them to invite them in, right? Invite them into a conversation with you and really get to understand them. And then you can solve their problems. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yes. That's awesome. Actually, when I think about it, I got into my work because 
I mean, I left the law firm and got into hypnotherapy and everything, not because this was on the trajectory of my, this is what I wanted to do. It's because I got sick and then it was through hypnosis that and hypnotherapy that I believe I healed. And that's why the name of my company came about to say heal within. And I realized the powers that we have within ourselves and how I can help other people through this modality. And now yes. 22 years working with us. And so it's, it's, although I'm solving people's issues. It's a different modality than somebody else. So it's not what I wanted to do. This became what I discovered that I can help others through right. this method. Right? And you've helped people with all kinds of things, like things that people don't normally think about. Like people don't normally think that they're weight is a psychological problem, right? Or a psychological concern. Emotional. They think of weight as what I'm putting in my mouth and the fact that I'm not exercising, right? right. But it's really, you know, or we can come up with all kinds of excuses. Well, that's my yeah. husband. He puts all the cookies in the house and now I can't not eat the cookies, right? And so <laughs> cookies are like my thing. <laughs> I know. So, but, it, you know, and it's easy because we point the fingers to the things that we can kinetically feel and that we can, you know, at, actually see, and um, I was thinking about this, you know, earlier, and I was thinking about mindset, right? And we think of mindset as everything that we think of, but mindset is really the things that we think of that we don't know that we're thinking. Exactly. Mindset is truly the subconscious part of the reason that we have the weight on us. And that is your heel within. It's, it's actually the mindset of the subconscious mind, not the conscious right. mind. We're exactly. always so only aware of the conscious mind. We think, oh, I fed my, I do my mantras and I read my this and I did my appreciation thing in my gratitude journal and how come my life's not grandiose? And so you can actually talk about that. How come your life's not grandiose when you do all that, you know? <laughs> That's because our programming. Deeper. Yeah. E everything is about the, the programming mindset. Usually when I uh, talk about clients and uh, our audience, you, you, it's one thing that you can even do this on your own. If you are listening, you can take a moment and literally write down. It's not necessarily the mindset. It's the mindset with a heart set from the core and the core is our subconscious. So if there is a habit you want to change and there is a difference between a habit and a routine and a ritual. So there are three different levels how it becomes is it a ritual because of what my family members did my grandmother my, my dad or something like mm -hmm. that those mm -hmm. are rituals and then there's a routine I do every day which is a choice you know and then when it gets to a habit when we repeat the habit how it becomes a habit I like mm -hmm. to share about that how uh, from a ritual to a routine becomes a habit when you repeat it to a point that it becomes automatic. You don't think about it, mm -hmm. right? And when you don't think about it, it's already a habit. But the habit can still be reversed or edited or changed if it is a negative habit that it's no longer good for you. And before it becomes part of your personality. That's the stage four. Yes. Personality is like when they come to me and they say, well, I've always been like this. No, you were not born with this. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. You know? right? So there is so many stages. And at that stage uh, is when we can make the shift. So mm -hmm. mindset reset from the core is what we are. That's another three right there. So, I'm glad you brought this up because somebody was saying, what is 3E? Why, why the 3E plus? I want everyone to know uh, as we're speaking that it's not, although 3E has always been women's empowerment, mm -hmm. this year is my last night, uh, the ninth annual 3E and my last 3E event that I'm putting together. And everyone is welcome, ladies your family, gentlemen. So it's men and women and 
anyone from all walks of life is welcome to attend. We have teenagers who are going to be there. It's not for children. Believe me, it's not for kids, right. but teenagers are welcome because there's going to be shifts when they come with their mom yes. uh, that is going to be profound. Last year, last year we had what? Five mothers and daughters in the uh, yeah, Right? No, um, grandmother, mother, daughter. It was no, like, we had so many generations. generations. So, yes, there was like a whole photo we did. I remember it was really, really, really neat. Yeah. You know, one of the things that I want to mention is because, you know, we, we've been doing so much planning coming up to this 3E event. And, uh, and so I've personally been evoking from everything that we've been talking about. And I noticed, you know, I've been pounding at the keyboard. I've been working and I've been stuck in my core. And so when you were talking about even weeks ago about when you're evoking, it's from the core, right? And I was stiff and I was stuck and I thought, what, what is going on? And so I've been writing and I've been evoking and I've been doing stuff. And finally, last night, I had a really good breakthrough and I was finally able to let my core go. And I could do like the, the twisty, turny exercises where I was like, ah, you know, before I'm going, because if you are stuck in your body, you are stuck in your mind and you don't even know it. You just think like you're frustrated or you're angry or something bad is like we don't we don't use our words properly when we're not aware of what the actual feeling is. And so um, so I'm like as I'm evoking, I'm and now I'm embracing and, I, and here we're coming up to the three E event. So I'm doing the steps, even just coming up to it again. And uh, and I'm so excited and I'm releasing as it's going on so that I'm going to be like a whole person ready to evolve. I know you're going to evolve at the event. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm so looking forward to this and I am so excited. And I mean, anybody it's who's going to not coming intimate. to this it's event is ripping awesome. themselves off right? I mean, this event is, is where you come and you just feel great when you leave, you know, uh, we, it's not, it's not like an all emotional event. It's a really empowering event. And so it's like, and I'm so excited for the guests that we have and so excited for all the things that you have planned. You've put so much into this. It's going to be really amazingly spectacular. I, I am so looking forward to this. I mean, for Aww. personally, as well as being a part of it you know yeah because even even as mr soap ceremonies even uh, me as the founder i feel it too i feel when the drumming happens i feel it i become part of it actually i'm like a child on that day very childlike because i soak in everybody else's energy yes. as well and yet i have to as the person who's putting it together and speaking and interviewing everything. It's like, I also hold space. Mm -hmm. I must hold space for my speakers, for my attendees and everything. And yet help everyone be part of it. It's like a big, huge celebration yes. of who we are. Yes. Not what we have not where we come from because it all encompasses as realizing you matter each and every one of us matters you as my mistress of ceremonies which is like my co-host matters as much as my speakers as much as the attendees each and everyone who is there is showing up for themselves absolutely absolutely so, and speaking either to you or my audience, whoever is listening, when from the moment you come in, you're going to be embraced. You're going to walk in immersed. there. Immersed. 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 Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. So, and we're going to end the day with a celebration. It is a celebration of life, celebration of who you are, celebration of womanhood, femininity, uh, individuality. It and we have a red carpet, right? And we have a red carpet. We have the book signing. I mean, literally this day from 9 a.m. until 6 when we even have that stage. So... I don't know. Even after six, because we have a reception. <laughs> like, it's just going to be it's Tell fun. Tell me about our speakers. Fun, I mean, fun, fun. Yeah. Our speakers, I mean, evoking, it's going to be me. It's going to be Aline Reed. That is all about soul, soul yeah. connection. 
right? right? So and beautiful. then introducing a panel of our co-authors. It's going to be amazing. The powerful she, the book that we are launching in the evening on that day, it's we're going to have half of our um, speakers on the panel. You, you get to meet our powerful co-authors uh and then we have this beautiful healing exercise we do we've got nourishing lunch and then afterwards we've got nancy matthews we've got uh she's going to be talking about the leadership from within i'm going to be interviewing her and then we're going to be having me uh interviewing uh laura, laura uh, lawrence laura. zarian and about I'm so excited for Lawrence. Oh my god, I'm it's so like, excited for Lawrence. I'm just sitting up straight. The beauty within, right? That's the my gig. Within. Yes, outside. yeah, I know because he's Being the fashion beautiful. Expert. He is the fashion, he's, he's the red the carpet, book. the real red carpet fashion expert, the right? real red carpet. And he's got this book about beautiful. And he's going to have his book. He's going to do the book signing. And what is beauty? The beauty from outside and the beauty from the inside. Mm -hmm. When we feel good from the outside, we feel good from the inside. But mm -hmm. if inside we're not feeling good, no matter what we do, it's like just a few days ago, I was going through it the same myself. I didn't feel beautiful to go and do a video. And it's just like, is it really the outside? But it's a projection. Right? right. So, and then Maurice Bernard. I can't wait until Maurice yes. is up on stage. He's fabulous. He is so fabulous. Genuine man. Mm -hmm. Right? A Authentic. Genuine... Truly, he lets you in. And we're, I mean, he's relatable. He's kind. He's going to be so good. So good to wrap up the day. It's really. I'm so pleased with everything that we're going to be yes. offering. I'm I'm honored that I get to be a part of this with you. Thank you for yeah. having me. On top of everything, we're going to have a stage hypnosis show. So it's right like mesmerized. <laughs> yeah, you know, Michael Mesmer. Uh, I want to say something about Michael Mesmer. I have I've had the honor of serving with Michael uh, on our hypnotherapy. The ACHE, which is um, the hypnotherapy. It is the council, the American Council of Hypnotherapists and Hypnotists. And we served on the board together for over two years. And we've known each other for over 20 years, for as long as I've been practicing from the time that our master Guild Boyne, the, the schooling that we both went through. And uh, so he took the stage version where I do hypnotherapy. And he is also a clinical hypnotherapist. So everyone coming there you get to hear and understand the difference of which one of us do, does what and the magic that happens within us mm -hmm. and then at the end we're going to have that uh, red carpet celebration party music and the book signing with our co-authors which it's going to be amazing. It's just, it's just a, a one full day of celebration. It's going to be fun. I'm really looking forward to it. So I know we talked about 3E. We talked about PR. We talked about social media. And I want to say I am honored to have met you. And, met you. and um, being my co-host, I am grateful to you. I appreciate who you are because your energy, your enthusiasm, it is contagious, girl. So a lot of people think that you and I are related. Some people think we're sisters when I was a little bit more blonde. So whatever it is, the energy, <laughs> my soul sister, I'm like, yes. love it. So thank you to you. And we invite all of you to join us. Um, at the three e event and get to see this duo be yes. on the stage and everything else. That I have three more tickets at the discounted price that I can give away. 
So if anybody wants that, they can DM me and I can give you my code. I have three more. And I'm sure if you had a fourth, Lisa would allow like one more in there. You know what I mean? Or something at the discounted price. But um, I'm just putting that out there because, uh, you know, anytime you can come and get a discount too, then it's like a win, 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 right? All the wins. <laughs> so. so I thank you for being a part of Real Talk and start writing, girl. Start yes. writing what it is that you want to make a change because on that day, we may have you come up on stage and make the change happen. Nice. Yes. Beautiful. So until I see you next time, until we talk, thank you for being part of the Real Talk Tuesdays with Lisa and God bless you. May the universal light surround you at all times. Bye everyone. Thank you for being here. If you want to check out some of the testimonials that I've got, click right here. But if you want to go back and watch other videos from a week ago, two weeks ago, even a year ago, click right here. See you next time.